Hey, I'm Roberto, uncle, dreamer, and Disney kid at heart. As a business profit strategist and community leader, I've had the chance to work with multiple business owners and community leaders ranging from napkin ideas to eight-figure brands. And along the way, there's been some failures, amazing successes, and lots of friendships have been born. Now, community leaders come from all walks of life and business. They might identify as a coach, consultant, speaker, a nonprofit leader, or a maker. But here's the thing. They all have one thing in common. They are purpose-driven brands and leaders seeking to create an even bigger impact in the world with and for their communities. This is the show that brings together community leaders and business leaders with communities to reveal their mistakes and successes to building and creating a highly impactful and profitable community. This is the Connected Community Leader Podcast. Well, hey, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of the Connected Community Leader Podcast. And I'm here today with another amazing guest, uh, Parker Stelly. Now, Parker is the co-founder of Deco Exchange, and y'all might know him over there. But one of the things that Parker is really amazing at is helping people create systems to scale their business. And the reason that I say that he's amazing at that is so many community leaders, entrepreneurs are always saying, how do I do more? and make more, but actually do less because you're trying to figure out how to take vacation, how to be out with the kids and do everything, but you already have so much on your plate. And so Parker has figured out how to build, scale, and grow a multi seven figure business, both on the digital side and a product based business by creating systems and allowing people to help him in the business. So welcome, Parker. What is up, Roberto? Thank you so much for having me. That was a hell of an intro, by the way. I appreciate that. (laughs) (laughs) Parker was like, where did that come from? That is not the bio that I sent. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I do all that, you guys. (laughs) Yeah, Parker does all that and more. So um, I guess in getting started out, Parker, you know, uh, you had a, I will say a pretty decent career going on. And then out of all, uh, out of nowhere comes this idea for, for Deco Exchange. And, you know, when y'all first got started in Deco Exchange, what were you really thinking? And what do you wish that, you know, you knew then that you knew now starting this multi seven figure business with product based and digital? Oh, my gosh. What was I thinking? Uh, so I, I played a very heavy supportive role in the business for quite some time. Uh, my business partner, Damon, he was kind of like the face of the business. He was the one that was always, you know, face forward, did all the work. Basically, he did it all himself for a long time. Um, and and during that time, I was just trying to be supportive, right? But as, as the business grew and as the need grew, I kind of stepped in as a, a COO role is the closest thing I could use to describe it. And, you know, there was just a lot of uncertainty, not only in the business, but in myself. Uh, as you mentioned, like we both, we both actually had really successful jobs. We were both uh, engineers in the oil and gas field. Uh, you know, we had 401ks, we had pension, we had all that stuff. And it was, it was just kind of really, it was really scary. Um, Damon, my partner ended up quitting his job first and I was still working my job, but really and truly during the whole day I was working on the business instead of my, my real job. Uh, but hopefully no one, no one hears that, but, uh, you know, I, I was scared. I, I was unconfident. I was not even close to the person or the business owner that I am today. Um, the, the whole journey kind of brought me through, um, you know, personal development, educational development, emotional development. Like it's, it's been a ride. Um, so one thing that I wish I had known before that I know now, oh man, there, there's so many things, but I, I think the, the one thing I would have to say is how important persistence is in running a business. Um, you're going to fail. Things are going to fall apart. You're going to fight. You're going to lose contracts, lose clients, whatever it is, it's going to happen. Um, but you just have to stay, you know, stay at it, stay like work the grind. And that, that was something I didn't know before. And I just kind of had this, um, 
this pie in the sky image of, of owning your own business. And, you know, you had these yachts and it was nice. And, um, it was just a reality check really. But that, that was one thing I, I didn't appreciate before. You know, one of the things I appreciate about what you said is, you know, there are so many, I don't even want to call them entrepreneurs. I'll, I'll just call them entrepreneurs that, you know, do a, a fairly great job at, with all these Facebook ads and everything else in front of all these yachts in front of their rented cars. And, you know, they like went and jumped over the, jumped over the fence at the the private airplane place to take a picture in front of an airplane, <laughs> but they don't show you the video footage of them being chased out. Um, and so the fact that, you know, you mentioned the word persistence in this journey. Um, I think that that's incredibly key because it can be easy to give up because I guarantee you, you probably had days where you're just like, oh my God, this is awesome. And you had days where you're just like, why didn't I just stay at my job? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it still happens. It, still happens. <laughs> it definitely does. So see y'all, that's why we just have these conversations where you get to see what really happens in business because we want people to know, like we all have good days, bad days, and wish we would have just stuck with the job days. So one of the things that you've really mastered and I've, man, over the past year, just seen your personal growth and your growth within the business has been awesome. Uh, but you've, you, you had this goal. I remember we were having a conversation one time and I don't remember the exact number, but you were just like, by this time, I want this many employees. By this time, I want this many this. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but you're that person that when you set a goal, you go figure out how to do it. So you figured out this whole growing with assistance thing and being able to get more done without having to do it yourself. What led you in that journey and how did that kind of start for the person that might be saying, I can't hire anybody? Oh man, I have, I have so many things to say. Uh, I, I should start out by saying that uh, both Damon and I, uh, we worked a lot of our professional nine to five careers as consultants. Uh, we had a dollar per hour value assigned to our names, and that was what our time cost. And we kind of we kind of took that same mentality and adopted it within our business. So I know what my time is worth. If I'm doing a ten dollar an hour job, I should be paying someone to do that so I can keep doing my you know hundred dollar an hour job or whatever it is. I mean, every job I kind of assigned a a price tag to it. And as soon as I mastered it, as soon as I had a procedure for it, as soon as I could do it backwards and forwards, I was looking for someone to pay to do that because I knew I could make more money doing something else in the business. So in terms of knowing your worth dollar per hour, you know, how does an entrepreneur or a community leader, you know, they've got, they've got this group, they might have a product or service. How do they begin to identify that. And where this question comes from is, you know, working with business owners and working with people that wanted to start something over, you know, any amount of time. I think that there's this phrase that people use, which is good, and that often cripples entrepreneurs, which is say, charge your worth. And um, some people just have a, a false reality about that, what, what that is, if we're being really real. Sure, for sure. And so how does someone begin to identify their hourly rate versus the value of the task at hand? So I, I, would, I would just bring up that I think there's two separate values that we're talking about now. There's a, there's a dollar per hour, hour you would charge someone as a fee or a coach or something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what does it look like if you spend an hour in your business? How much revenue does that generate in your business? So I'm a data person. I'm a a tech geek, Excel spreadsheet nerd, whatever you want to call me. I took an average over months and broke that down into weekly revenue amounts. So if I spent 40 hours a week for 10 weeks, how much money did that generate for my business? If it was just me doing it, whether it be maybe I was doing a launch, maybe I was writing books, maybe it was uh, creating courses, whatever it is take the average of that amount and that's what your time is worth in your business on average. Does awesome. that make sense? I love that. It makes sense to me. 
And I guess maybe the reason it makes sense to me is one, I think, in bullet points and spreadsheets also. <laughs> uh, but also I had the opportunity to take a look at a book that you've put out um, that really helps people begin to understand how to figure that out within their business. So if the first thing is to be able to identify the hourly, right, then how do they actually decide what roles they should maybe go after first? Um, you know, do they go get the graphic design person first or do they hire themselves a house cleaner first? And, and I, I know that's probably a ridiculous question, but I know people that say like, I'm going to hire a house cleaner before I hire somebody in my business. So kind of how do you decide which roles you bring on next? I like to just segment things just like you would segment your email list or your emails or anything like that. I kind of have these, these ideas of buckets in my head, whether it be, um, you know, social media or, uh, email marketing or graphic design or writing copy. I, I take all of the different aspects of my day to day or week to week or month to month business. And I drop those in each different buckets. And then I kind of look at each bucket as a whole and I would say, mm, I really, I don't like doing graphic design. So that, that gets pushed up to the priority list of what, what needs to go, what needs to get done by someone else. Not to mention graphic design is a very like, technical task, right? If you're not good at graphic design, obviously you're not going to have a good, good time with your marketing material. But I kind of grade those buckets on what do I want to get rid of? What do I not like doing? But I also include what do I love doing? What am I good at? What can I do in the snap of a finger? Because right time is money. That's the whole premise of, of my whole discussion in that book. If I can do something really quick and really well, I don't want to give that to someone else because it, it's nothing for me. I can do it in my sleep. Uh, but if it's something like graphics for me, I'm not, I'm not a graphic person. Uh, that takes time. It's a technical thing. So that was on, on the priority list of I don't want to do this anymore or I need an expert to do this for me. Awesome. So key takeaways I heard through these past few things is one, know the hourly worth of not only yourself, but the different tasks within the business. Absolutely. After you know those hourly wages, we'll say per se, then be able to divide those into buckets. So to have like your social media bucket or your graphics bucket, your different buckets, and to be able to figure out out of those, which are the ones that you really love and which are the ones you hate. And if it's something you're really good at, then obviously do it because if you can do it quick, time is money and to do that. So yeah. that makes sense so far. I, um, should, I should also mention, not to cut you off, but um, also – account for how much time you spend on each of the things in the bucket. Cause what I'm doing in the book is basically building out the formula for you, right? You know, your hourly time, you know, how much time you spend uh, on that specific task, you know, time times the, the, the cost that's a dollar per hour. So if it, if it costs you $20 an hour, or you could pay someone $10 an hour, you just made $10 an hour by okay, hiring someone. I hope that's making sense to you. And if not, then you're going to have to get Parker's book to actually see the handouts. <laughs> uh, but it makes sense to, to my crazy head because I love data. Um, so that's, that's some important stuff. That, that's key. But before you could do that, I'm sure there were some personal development pieces or mindset pieces that, <laughs> that, that you got to deal with. And I say got to deal with because as entrepreneurs, Man, y'all, if y'all have been listening to other episodes of this show, y'all have heard some crazy stuff, is, is all I'm going to say. And my guess is, is that, that Parker probably had something in his journey, too. So when you look at where you are now, you know, um, how many, actually, how many assistants or contractors do I even have now versus a year ago? I, uh, a year ago, I don't know, probably like four or five, but now we're up to like 16 or 17 or ish. Um, I had a list the other day. I don't remember how many exactly, but it's around 15 to 16. Um, but yeah. So y'all, that, that's amazing. And the thing is, is this is possible for you to, when you actually sit down and are willing to not be the person that has to do everything. Um, you can actually help a lot more people and serve a lot more people when you're not the one doing everything up front. And so in that journey for you, you know, what would you say, like, was there like, a book or a course or um, like a mentor that just like really kicked your butt and was like, Parker, get your ish together. And, you know, something that really helped you along the way. <laughs> I, 
I, I can't say that it was one, one thing, but I can list, you know, probably five or six things if that's okay. Okay. Of, yes. Of, of things that either shifted my mindset or, um, kind of like a an aha moment that I had or, um, two books that you recommended. One was uh, rocket fuel. The other one was emotional IQ 2.0. Uh, just to give you a little backstory. Um, I still feel young. I just turned 30 uh, last week. Um, so I'm the idea of myself running a multi-million dollar business and being 29 is kind of a lot for me to even say at this, at this very moment and I'm getting better at it, but there's a lot of, of things in my head going on when I say that. And it's not usually positive thoughts. It's like, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, a lot of negative self-talk, right? So some of those books that you recommended helped me, um, uh, Warren also, uh, Warren Carlisle with Octonation, shout out. Uh, he is a champion of mental health and he talked to me a lot about the same things that, I, that he's felt and how he's dealt with them and actually recommended um, therapy. And I'm, I'm a huge advocate for therapy now. I don't think I'll ever stop doing therapy. You also had mentioned it to me before as well, Roberto. Um, but uh, it, it kind of changed, like it shifted gears, right? It's the same, the same machine I've been driving all my life, but I just like shifted into another gear where I just unlocked potential. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but I honestly can't describe it any other way. Uh, my confidence has been up. Every, everything has improved in my life. Um, so definitely if you got any of you guys listening, ever feel any of the things that I just described or, um, honestly, even if you don't therapy is, is a a wonderful thing. Uh, as far as mentors, obviously, uh, Damon is a huge, um, a force when it comes to running a business and um, scaling a business and monetizing anything and everything. Uh, Roberto, you've been a, a huge, um, uh, just an, an advocate for me, really. Um, I think you, you were one of the first people that saw potential in what I was doing and kind of uh, vocalized that to me. Um, because I, to be honest, I like, I lived in the shadow of Damon for quite some time and it's only recently that I've been um, stepping out more into the spotlight and kind of, you know, having coaching calls and doing courses and writing eBooks and kind of sharing the the knowledge that I've had. So definitely uh, your mastermind was, was a a key thing for me. Other than that, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of, of different courses. Rachel Miller is a good friend of mine who um, not necessarily personal development, but business development. She's, she's got some great stuff as well. Um, I'm sure I'm missing people, but you know, we've, we've just met a lot of great friends, a, gr- a lot of, I don't even call them mentors. It's really just friends that we've met along the way, uh, that we go back and forth. We have chats, texts with all of the time about, you know, business stuff or personal stuff or just stupid memes or whatever it is. We're always chatting. Um, but yeah, just having a nice network of, of successful people is, has been really helpful in my growth. Yeah. And you know, I want to take a second to dive in on two things that you mentioned. And, you know, I know we started this conversation with, hey, time is money. How do you actually scale the business? And I think that you hit on something that we haven't, well, you and I've talked about, you, me and Warren have talked about, we haven't talked about on this show yet, which is the importance of your mental health as an entrepreneur. Um, And that sometimes when people are in business with either with, you know, a business partner or a relationship or whatever, there's always, it seems like there's always that person who's the the limelight. And then there's the person who's like the whole Bette Midler song, you're the the wind beneath the wings, kind of keeping them going type Mm -hmm, thing. mm -hmm. And so, you know, let's talk about just for, uh, I guess, a moment, you know, there's a lot of stigma about therapy. There's a lot of stigma around mental health in America. Um, especially the past few months with everything going on in the world. Um, We're in a very crazy world to say the least. You know, what would you tell that person who's just like, yeah, therapies for whatever they come up with. And maybe I guess, did you have any stigmas about therapy before you were just like, okay, cool. I'll give it a shot and see what happens. Absolutely. Um, Can we curse? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I don't think I don't think we have a G rating on Apple, okay. and if we do, that's easy to change. You can bleep it out <laughs> if you can. See like you've heard like the woo woo shit before, right? Like the I'm I'm not a, a particular um, woo woo person, you know. I'm not like into all that kind of stuff, and I think I kind of associated 
mental health or therapy or even something like meditation, I never appreciated the power of mindfulness or taking a minute to breathe or just being inside your head for a minute. And honestly, just that alone can change someone's life. It can change your whole perspective. It can change your state of mind. It's, it's honestly insane, the power that mindfulness can have in you. So yeah, I had stigmas. And I don't think I had a particular reason. I just thought like, oh, it's not that big of a deal or, you know, mindset's, <laughs> you know, mindset's just one of those things that people talk about and it's not really like effective. Uh, I can put my shoe and eat it, or put my, my foot in my mouth right now and eat it because that it couldn't be any more true to me right now. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without mindset or therapy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was, t- I, I used to tell people, it's like, they'd be like, how can you do X? And it was, you know, whatever seemed impossible for them at the time, you know? And I think that without, throughout our journeys, we all see somebody that's just like, well, how the hell did they do that? And it was just, you know, kind of where we were, we couldn't see that. And for years, it was like, yeah, therapy is kind of my secret weapon. And they're just like, what? And I'm like, no, it really is a weapon. Like when you can kind of like get to know yourself and stuff. And then yeah. this other part is, you know, did you find when you were ready to, you know, like really over the past year, like I said, you've gone from like four or five contractors to 17 ish and are really not so much in the day to day anymore, but really leading the business. And, you know, for somebody that has that business partner or somebody that they're in a business with, you know, what was it like to say, Hey, like, I'm just, I'm not always just a support person, but let me take a more active role in this because I think there's people sometimes that want to take that active role, but they don't know how to speak up yet. I I think it's important to understand um, like your role in the business as well. Um, I am by no means trying to like, take over Damon's position or do anything like that. Um, I, I know, and this goes back to the book that you recommended rocket fuel. Um, I know that I'm the builder and I know that Damon is the architect. So I always respect that our personalities are just, that's who we are and what we do. Um, but I also know that I can build stuff and be a bit of an architect too. Um, so I kind of just realized as we were growing the business, I realized what my strengths were and I realized what Damon's weaknesses are. And I kind of tried to fill the gap there and tried to kind of just make, make a complete puzzle, right? I didn't want any missing pieces in in the business. So um, identify your strengths and identify your partner's weaknesses and try to complement each other. And I know that sounds like a relationship, but it, it really like a, you know, a physical or emotional relationship, but it really is. is. Um, I just, kind of try to fill the void. Like I've, like I said, I've always playing, tried to be the support. And if I see someone who is struggling with something or who um, isn't, can't do something as well as I can, I'm like, Hey, let me, let me do that. Or let me take care of that. Or let me get that off your plate. Um, so that's been my approach to the whole thing. I just, uh, I think there's some importance to staying in your lane as well and not trying to bite off more than you can chew. I agree with you. We talk more about that, about what that looks like for somebody who's maybe doesn't even know what their lane is yet. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all, here's what happens when, so for any of y'all that are saying, Hey, l- let me be a podcast guest. Here's the thing. You never know what question you're going to be asked, especially, you know, so Parker and Damon also have a, a great podcast called Makers Mean Business, which y'all should definitely check out. And they're kind of the same way. They just throw questions at people and think they're going to have the answers right away. And well, to you know, be fair, we part- sent we send them a document with some leading <laughs> questions, which we didn't have for this. Also, I should mention that I'm more of a thinker and Damon more is more of a an instant answer kind of person. So whenever I get hit with stuff, I have to like, oh God, let me think about that for a second. <laughs> yeah. And so while, while, while Parker thinks about that, we're just going to cut out. And I'm just kidding. We're not going to cut out the part where he said that Damon has weaknesses because, you know, like I don't think Damon would admit to that on Facebook Live. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. But we all, we all know everyone's human, right? Uh, yes. Last I checked. But no, as, as far as like staying in your lane, like I'm not going to go and try to, uh, Damon's like the performer, right? I'm not going to go on live and try to be someone that I'm not. That's, that's my idea of me staying in my lane. I'm not going to go try and uh, lead this mastermind that he's doing. Like that's staying in my lane. I'm not going to go 
oh my God, and try to buy a bunch of supplies because that's his lane. So th- there's things where you, it, it really depends on your own business, right? Like what you do and who you serve. But I think most people kind of know, especially in a partnership relationship, what is their responsibility and what is your responsibility. And as long as there's a good communication on uh, what's getting done and what's not getting done and a good judgment on what's getting done well and what's not getting done well, I think there's always that room for growth to kind of expand your lane or um, kind of understand what you can do to help more, if that makes sense. It does. And by identifying your lane, being able to going back to where we started today, you know, say this is the stuff that's my lane, but it's maybe not the best thing. And those are the things that you go and figure out which bucket they're in and Absolutely. Yeah. be able to effectively outsource. So as we begin to wrap up here, uh, where can people learn more about Parker and all of Parker's awesomeness and connect with Parker in his book and everything? Uh, you can just go to parkerstelly.com. That's Stelly, S-T-E-L-L-Y. Uh, yeah, the book, uh, there's a link to the book there. There's also a one-on-one call and you can sign up for my newsletter or anything like that there as well. I love it. Parker has a newsletter now. This is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Parker it's just gonna be has pictures a of newsletter. Me. It's just going to be pictures of me. <laughs> it's going to be Parker's Picks, y'all. Parker'sPicks.com. I'm just kidding. No, go to that website because I have no idea what it is. He may not even own it. Okay. <laughs> Closing out here today, what one piece of advice would you give community leaders and entrepreneurs? I think being true to yourself will get you a very, very long way. Um, I, I already mentioned persistence. That's usually my go-to, uh, my go-to thing. But honestly, just being true to who you are and who you serve and your community, uh, it it's it's such a powerful thing. It gives people understanding of you. It gives you room to be human and make mistakes and admit your mistakes. It gives you understanding from other people. There, there's so, I mean, I could talk all day just about that. Um, Damon and I have, have been nothing but open books to our, our community. We, when we're live, that's who we are. When we're off live, we're the same people. Um, and I think that has been one of the reasons why we've had such, uh, such success in our space is that we're just true. We're just normal people. And uh, I think that really helps, especially in this day and age where you're not just a faceless business, you're not just some random logo, you're a human. Um, I I think that really helps. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. Be true to yourself. Uh, Be sure to check Parker out over at parkerstelly.com and be sure to subscribe and uh, we'll chat with y'all soon. Bye-bye.